Hello again, viewers. My name is Richard Land. If you've been watching these videos, you already know me as an attorney and member of our law firm, Chipman Mizuko Emerson. This is part three, the last part in our series of videos introducing you to my younger trust and estates partners as I plan my transition to retirement. In parts one and two, I introduced you to Allison Marcusio and Shelby Wilson in this part three, my focus will be on Jim Flaherty. Jim brings decades of experience and expertise to guiding clients through the complexities of estate planning, estate settlement, and trust administration. Throughout his career, Jim has demonstrated a steadfast commitment to his clients' needs, ensuring that their best interests are always at the forefront. His professionalism, attention to detail, and dedication to excellence have earned him the trust and respect of his clients and the legal community. We're fortunate to have Jim as a valued partner in our firm, where his knowledge and insights greatly benefit all of us. Included in this video is a three minute clip of him in action as he discusses what's involved in changing the state of your residence with tax planning in mind. This video clip is a small portion of a longer presentation at our firm's 25th annual estate planning seminar. Now I give you Jim Flaherty in this short video entitled, How Do I Change My Tax Home? When I talk to folks and they have multiple residences, uh, the first thing I want to know is where do you truly live? Where do you, where do you spend your time for the most part. And we talk about the definition of domicile. It's a, the place, so the tax authorities, which is what we're most concerned about, but it is also from a probate standpoint, tax authorities want to know uh, where you intend to live, what is your permanent residence, and if you leave that residence, where do you intend to return? Where do you spend the most of your time? Once established, your, your domicile remains unchanged until you make affirmative election to change it. So it's by moving to a new location with a bona fide intention of making it your fixed or permanent place of residence. You can generally only have one domicile. So it's, if it's Connecticut, it's Connecticut. If it's Florida, that's another thing. If it's New York, that again. Uh, However, tax authorities, being what they are, will at times both seek to establish your domicile for you. So we're going to talk a bit about how you establish domicile and why it's so important from an estate planning standpoint. You may have uh, residences in two or more places, but again, only one domicile. 183 days, that's the magic number. You spend more than 183 days in any given jurisdiction, you're considered domiciled in that jurisdiction for tax purposes. And that's the, the rule in most states, particularly where we're at now in Connecticut, New York. It's an important number. So how do you change your domicile? So for example, if I'm looking to move to Florida, how do I do that? Well, first I establish that permanent place of abode. In Florida, you can actually sign a declaration of domicile. The county courthouse in, in Florida uh, will have a form that you can fill out and you file it uh, with the clerk. Registering to vote is extraordinarily important. Get your driver's license in that jurisdiction. Register your automobile. When you go to file your income tax return, your 1040, make sure it's with the service center for that jurisdiction. And where you can, maintain your financial accounts with local banks in that jurisdiction. If, if nothing else, change the address. If you have professional licenses or union memberships, make sure that gets changed as well. And there are ways to become a non-resident of various organizations you might belong to, whether it's religious or fraternal, uh, those sorts of things. Keep a record of your travels. Thanks, Jim. If you'd like to see the rest of the video, you can find the link in the description below and at the top right corner of this video. That concludes this three-part video series. I hope they've been helpful. 
If you'd like to know more about Allison, Shelby, or Jim, reach out to any one of us. Or if you'd like to know more about my plans for transitioning to retirement, reach out to me. One of my goals is to make certain your estate planning is squared away before my transition is complete. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.